Hello, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Cam, and welcome to another video in our playlist, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. So I'm recording this video from the future with the new C Sharp script component in Rhino 8. And I want to introduce you to a new feature that is part of this new revamped, uh, updated C Sharp script component, which is breakpoints, or in other words, the ability to take a closer look and debug errors that might be happening inside of your C Sharp script component. I don't believe I have talked about breakpoints in other videos, so maybe we can start here. But let's start first with why would we want to use breakpoints? Why are they useful? How can we use them as a debugging tool? So let's imagine a scenario where I'm writing a C Sharp script component that takes a bunch of names. So those are going to be strings. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the amount of characters that each one of those names has, the amount of uh, characters, right? And for some reason, the way those names are generated, maybe we imported them from a file, maybe someone wrote them incorrectly, whatever. For some reason, one of the names is not a valid name. One of the names is a null object. So there was an error importing the file. Uh, I don't know. There's like many things that can go wrong when you parse data, when you import data, when you exchange data, all those things. What that's going to mean is that if I write an algorithm of this kind, for example, I'm going to write an algorithm. Let me make this a little bigger, perhaps. I'm going to write an algorithm that is going to iterate. I'm going to write an algorithm that is going to iterate over all the names in a list of string that is imported. I am going to create a, an empty list of integers. So that's probably going to be an integer, sorry. And then what I'm going to do is with a for loop, I'm going to go over all the names. And then I'm going to fetch each one of the names individually from the list of names. And I'm going to calculate its length. So name.length. And then I'm going to add that length to the list of lengths that I have here. And then I'm going to export that here. What you're going to see is that if I execute this code, I am going to get an error. What is this error going to be? Error running the script object reference not set to an instance of an object. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, and I also get the same error here on the terminal, the new terminal for the Rhino 8 C Sharp script component. All right. Let's imagine that instead of a simple list with seven names, these were millions and that I didn't quite have the patience or the capacity to just start scrolling down and seeing visually if I can find what the element that is causing the error, which one it might be. So one way to go about this could be using breakpoints as a way to analyze this code. So for example, let's say that I suspect that one of the elements might be a null element and that I want to know which one it is, in which position on the list it is. Something that I can do is I can say, for example, if name equals equals null, then I want to print something to the console. So console write line uh, found null element. All right. If I do this and I execute this code, you can see that indeed we did find a null element. You can see it on the message on the console. I can't make the console any bigger. Sorry, uh, it's probably difficult for you to watch, right? But let's say that uh, I want to know as much information as possible of when this error happens. Something that I can do is I can say, well, I know that the error is happening when this name is null. So when this line of code executes, all right, uh, actually, no, let me re let me read. Let me undo that. Let me just say that I'm going to press, I'm going to create a break point here in this line of code. So I'm going to press on the left of the number and I'm going to create this red dot. What that's going to do is that it's going to turn on debugging mode. What you can see is that the play button now has like a tiny bug on it. And when I hit execute, what's going to happen is that any time the compiler or the executor is going through this line of code, the entire execution is going to halt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this interesting breakdown, a snapshot of the state of the program at this time. So you can see that 
the value of the variable i is zero, which means it's the first iteration of the for loop. The value of name is bar, and the value of characters is still null because there's nothing going on there, all right? So what I can do is I can now say, step into one method. So go one, down one line. Length is now the number three, and now go back to another one, and you can see how the execution is going one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. You can see that at some point, when I hit the element number five, you can see that now name is null. You can see that it turns out that I have found that when i equals five, then the element in position number five in the names list is a null element. So that could be, is that matching what I actually have? Yes. So you can see that in the list, in position number five, we have a null element. And then check this out. The moment I let this line of code execute, right? The moment I execute it, I get the error right here because name is a null object. So we cannot read the property length of this object. All right. So, and then now we get the error here on the component. So breakpoints are basically a good way of taking a closer look at the state of the program at any given point. If I use the technique that I showed you before and I say, for example, if name equals equals null, then I can console write line uh, null element. And if instead of setting the breakpoint here, I set it on this line, you know, I know that this line is only going to execute whenever name is equal to null. So now when I run the code, instead of having to go through all the steps, which would have been crazy if I had had a million of strings, now I can go directly to pausing the program the moment I know that there is an error and then take a look at the state of the program. So now I know that is element number five, the one that is a null element. What that means is that before this c -sharp script component, maybe I can now go ahead and write something that cleans up this, the, the list, that targets the fifth element and removes that element from the list, or I could implement those error checks. I could implement them here in the, um, in the code, okay? So I could say, for example, uh, I could stop the execution and say to the lens at the value of zero, or otherwise, then just add this here. And if I now run this code, I believe, even without the breakpoint, I believe that this is going to work perfectly fine. You see, now we have zero here. Now we have correctly debugged and improve our code and make, and make it a bit more resilient and a bit more error-proof, okay? So remember, breakpoints are a fantastic tool. If you want to try to debug your code, find exactly where certain errors are or at any given point in the life of a program to just stop the execution and take a look, take a snapshot of all the values of all the variables that are being executed and are being updated uh, along the execution of your script. Okay, beautiful, fantastic. So with this, I think this is as much as I wanted to cover for this new update in the Rhino 8 C Sharp script component. Uh, and I think we're ready to move on to the next videos on this playlist. Thank you very much. And if you, if you found this useful, maybe like this video, subscribe to the channel, uh, join our Discord, say hi in the comments, whatever. Thank you very much. See you in the next videos. Bye bye.